You guys, what about it's the kid, 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 man. So look, man, this is something new that I thought that would be pretty, pretty good to bring up, which is, you know, reviewing leagues, reviewing the leagues and seeing what's up in all the different leagues, you know. So I'm going to be going through the major teams in each of the leagues and seeing a little bit about them to say what's up. Balini, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start off first with, um, let's just go with how it looks like. So, Chelsea. You see, <clears throat> Chelsea are, this was to be expected. This was to expect, be expected from Chelsea, which is in the sense of, okay, a little bit of an identity crisis. Because, and this is beautiful because I think that this is exactly what is needed for every manager. You need that bit of difficulty because the notion was, Wow, nobody can crack this three at the back that becomes a five. Nobody can break down this Chelsea team. What's not going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. City completely and totally outplayed Chelsea, deservedly beat them. And you now saw what Juventus did to Chelsea. So certainly it's like the team that was once impenetrable, invincible, now looks ordinary. I think when you looked at that Southampton game, it was too cold, which is what everybody called for against Juventus with a look back. Go to the drawing board and think four dimensionally. 3DF on losers, 3 d for bricks. Think four dimensionally, dare I say even five dimensionally. Look at who else is out there that, can, that you can see what's up to. And of course, that's where you brought in Horton and Doi and you brought in off the chick who has just brought in a whole breath of fresh air because players are different. The beauty of a squad are uh, players have different characteristics and different interpretations. So once you reach a, br a brick wall tactically, look at your bench. Look at your squad, look at your roster, because this player is going to come and give you something different that you've never had before, and therefore oppositions who may have figured you out will be like, ah, this is a player who doesn't do the things that Kovacic does, the things that Jorginho does, the things that Zeja, the things that Havertz does. So just as you know, that victory from Slapto was needed, 3-1, good dub, and I think that, you know, Chelsea just needed just to get back into winning ways, because I think they somewhat lost their way. And when you just think of now this going forward, Tuchel now needs to really think about, hmm, I can't be married to this system. I can't be a slave to this setup. And I have to really look at, dare I say, ZH is finished. I think this is just ZH is done. But dare I say, Ross Barkley. Is this a case where maybe Ross Barkley can, can do something? But one thing is for sure. One thing is for sure. Saul is officially a flop. I don't want to hear anything else. He's officially 100% a flop. Um, Liverpool. Things have changed. Things have changed. You know, um, I, for me, I still believe, that's why I so wanted to say that Liverpool sit again, because for me, I still believe that Liverpool are going to be very strong challengers because they have their numbers back. The Liverpool of Zalas last season, that was not the real Liverpool. This is the real Liverpool because this was very much the, the, the team, this was the setup that got 99 points. It's already been 100 and something points. Um, but what I wanted to see was, okay, can these guys give City the same issues? And they can't. Because Liverpool have that they got lucky without a draw. They should have really lost. But again, you get what you de you get what you deserve, not what you think you freaking deserve. But look, what this shows was like, La is that freaking dude. La is one of the best players in the world. He's one of the best performers in the world. He is right there and deservedly deserves his tier one status. And but the, the danger here for Liverpool is they are getting very close to being perhaps too overly reliant on Salah. I don't want to go as far as to say this is a one-man army because I can't, I can't disrespect what Jota, Van Dijk, and what people like Manny and so forth can bring. But if El Dio doesn't show up, it is looking like almost like a one-man army because yes, Liverpool got the 99 points because remember, Manny's goals won Liverpool the most points. You know, his goals were valuable. Salah scored more goals, but Manny's goals were crucial. So. For Liverpool, I think what this showed is, it's good that my man is scored, but he didn't have that great a, 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 a game. So, it again reminds you that every single season you have to improve. Every single season you have to bring in a new player, a new player, a new player. You have to continue to improve it, especially when you win. So, because Liverpool obviously I had to do it based off what happened last season, but as, even if you win, even after the 99 point season, you have to keep on improving. You know, like... Um, what's, what's, what's the saying? A genius always asks questions. You can always get better. Even if you're, you think you're the best, you can still be better than, than the best. You can still be better than perfect. Um, so, Liverpool are going to be in there. I remember they were, they were missing trends in this game. But I say to myself that, 
what if Salah? Salah just never gets, they're lucky because Salah is almost like mess in the sense of he is so crucial for you and he never gets injured. He never gets injured. But don't play with fire because do you know why you don't play with fire? Go what happened with Van Dijk, Gomez and so forth. You could just have a freakish situation where somehow Salah just gets one of those injuries that's now not out for three, four months. Always have a plan Z. Always have a plan Z. So I just think it's, it may be really important for Liverpool in January. Let's see what's, let's see what's popping in, in January. Let, let's see what other guys are out there. But I think what is also very crucial, you have your Van Dijk there. You have your boy Thiago there. It's on first of the, the lost Harvey Elliott. El Dio has to show up. Because let me, Markman was Liverpool fans. This is, this is, this is fact. So there's a new thing called hashtag honesty. Hashtag honesty. If El Dio doesn't show up, Liverpool can't win the, the league. They'll come close based off Salah and Jossa. And obviously Van Dijk's defensive work and Beck as well. But for them to win the league, they need El Dio to, to, to show up. Because if El Dio shows up with what Salah is doing, that is the recipe to winning the league. So the key is because I'm not sure that El Dio is back. Yes, he scored, but it's El Dio back where this guy is always popping off in each game. That's the real question. Man City, man. Pepidi. Pepidi, my guy, man. Um, I believe at the moment, it's, it's seven games played, so it's still very early. Seven games played, still very early. I believe that um, City are the best team. City are the best team. Um... And they've really hit their stride. Ever since they are, ever since that loss again, it just shows you how things changed. They didn't get the striker. I was like, well, you can't get the finisher. They then lose to... Um, um, they then take an L to your boys, um, Tottenham. And once they down to, took the L, everyone's like, oh my gosh, these guys are screwed. They're finished. They're finished. What the hell is going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. But my thing is, um, don't... Be reactionary and don't judge guys based off of one game or two games or so, so forth. This is a marathon, not a sprint. I think once City, once Pep just got them together, got them flowing and so forth, these guys are now popping up. But I think what is very going to be, be important is who can best play that force and position, which is what they wanted Grinch to play in that game against Liverpool, but he wasn't that effective. So I still feel that City are going to still be near the, the top and they're still the team to beat because... Pep's system is very, is very good for the league format. Hence why he's done so well in leagues from Bundesliga. I know Barcelona and now for Man City because the way they play, it can very easily be replicated. And also because of that passing system, it can break down anything. You know, because they can, they will always be able to find that one key amazing pass that no one sees. That's one key run that, that, that no one sees. But I think you know, it, it, it begs the, the question. Look at how well Ben Ben Silva had an amazing game, and it's so funny. This was a guy that people wanted. He was about to go. He was literally at the exit door, and Sony right now is like, "Wait a minute! This guy is now doing what he was doing like in 2018 when people said, is it him or Sterling, the the, the best players for City that season?'" So if they can get that kind of 2018 Ben Under Silva, um, they're looking high. <laughs> These guys are looking pretty damn high, man. So um, that's the thing. So I mean, I mean, look. It's, it's going to be a very interesting league, man. And do they need a striker? Did they need a finisher? Did, should they have really gone in for Cristiano? I don't know. One part of me says yes, because the, the, the arrivals from last season have improved exponentially. But another part of me says no, because one of those rivals that have improved were Chelsea. And look at what they did to Chelsea. One of those rivals that have now gotten back to what they were at Liverpool, and they should have beaten Liverpool. So, two of the guys who have now worn now at their strongest, you all, you you beat one of them very easily, and you should have beaten the, the other one. So then it goes to show that Pep's tactic, because it's so good and so effective, especially if you now cannot get better the silver popping off. And this is the thing, if they can get Sterling popping off, because Sterling was showing shades of what's up. So if you get Sterling and better the silver pop popping off, I don't think they freaking do, man. I shout out to Rodri, man. Rodri, that is block of the season. That season was block of the season, but we're still trying to find Laporte wherever. I think Laporte, I think they said that he's got like amnesia. He's got amnesia right now after what Salah did, did to him. United. Man United, man. Um, you see, people, this is what people say, and it's a touch. Where does the manager get the blame? 
where do the players get the blame? So where is so where where is it where now nah, the manager did the best that he, he could, the, the players flopped. Or where is it where bro, we where this blueprints that you've given us that makes no freaking sense. But I think though that here's the thing. So even just looking at that Everton game. United should be beating Everton. You have the better players, you have the better individuals. And whatever it says, if the team with the better individuals and better players, if they don't win, it's most, more times than not, it's down to the manager. And that's where we now have to now say, let's look at the guy in the opposition dugout. Rafa Benitez is the most underrated manager in the world. Not he's one of, I think he's, he is the most underrated manager in the world, and I think he is very underappreciated. And what you just saw was excellent management and an excellent tactical setup because that was the game that Everton could have very easily won. You know, the way, like, we're just, we're just a yard away from where your Remina's goal could, could, could have stood. So, and this is the issue. How many times will Ole come, a, come against a superior manager who has better experience and superior tacticals and can make a better in-game changes and in-game management to mess him up? Because... It's hard to fall on Oli because it's like, because see, Oli, you're in a very bad position because once you have every player you need, every player at your disposal, the amount of excuses you can have starts to become very thin because you can't say, well, now if only I had this, if only, you have it, you have it all. And even if you, and even without the so-called DM that you need, why did you take off Cavani? Why did you take off Martial? These are guys who you didn't even need to take off. And I think based off of your attacking talent and if your defensive line, their pressing game is on points and your setup without the ball is on points, you should be able to cater for not having a DM against a team like Everton. And you should be able to outscore a team like Everton with the plethora of talents that you have. So, and I was saying this before, man, it's, it's, it's Disney Plus Plus. That goal he scored in 99 has given him more chances than he should be afforded because I will speak about my man, Uncle Mo. I will speak about my man, Uncle Mo. They have a hatred in this, my boy. They've hated in this, my man, Uncle Mo, man. So, and say to you right now that Uncle Mo, under the rest, he was insulted. He did it still to deliver a, a trophy. So for United, it remains to be seen. But, it's, but what I always say to you is that if they finish the season without a trophy, Let's say they come second. They get to the CL quarters, but it ends without a trophy. Does he still see out his, his contract? Um, so, shout out to your boys, um, Tottenham, man. Um, they finally got the win after a few L's. And it's going to be a difficult season, man. It's going to be a, a difficult season, you know, but Son is still that good because Son was instrumental. In saying what's up, in um, in um, getting the, the winning goal for your boy Lucas Moura, man. I thought Espirito Santo was going to be a really good good hire, uh, and I still think he's a decent manager and coach. But I think when you go from Mourinho to Santo, that is a downward movement. No disrespect to Santo, but it is what it is. Like if you're going from a Mourinho to now Espirito Santo, that is a downward movement that you're pretty much making. So. Um, for Tottenham, it's going to be a difficult season, you know. I mean, currently, I mean, you're currently in eighth, and ahead of them are it's early boy Brentford ahead of you, Brighton are, 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 are ahead of you now, man. So, um, and you look at that heavy, heavy loss they they, they, they took against Arsenal. So, <laughs> but you may just look at Kane, who missed a one v one. You say to yourself that where are Tottenham going, and he's, and you say this as well because I, that's why it's always about Tottenham. Can is there any manager to come in? and actually deliver this club a trophy. Do they have the players and the people to deliver them a trophy? And that's why I always look at Kane, because for all the plots that this guy gets given, you have been in several finals, and you've not been able to perform in these finals. So if your best player, your star player, should be some bullet, but you're the star player, you tell me is Kane and doesn't perform in these games, then what's bro? Um, Arsenal, man, 0-0 zero, zero against your boys Brighton. Shout out to Brighton. Hopefully, thankfully, more people did not score. Um, eight shots, so what? So Brighton had, had 20, 21 shots, two on target. Arsenal had eight shots, two on, two on, on, on target. And here's, here's the thing, guys. So Arsenal currently 11. It's, it's only day seven games played, but they're currently 11th. Um, Arsenal are finishing mid-table this season. 
and I just think that you know, um, Ateta is just not the right dude. <laughs> you know, it's, I I told you this from earlier on, and this is see this is just what I don't understand. Well, what I don't get just as like a football guy. Arsenal are one of the biggest clubs in the world in terms of fans. Their fan base is huge. Like everyone in Nigeria pretty much supports us, Arsenal. The t a team that has guys like Saka, Odegaard, Aubameyang, um, this Smith Rowe kid, and so forth, shouldn't be finishing below West Ham, shouldn't be finishing below Villa, shouldn't be, be finishing below any of these guys. But my danger here is that remember the Premier League becomes more and more competitive with each given season. If these guys finish mid table again with a club that has the highest season ticket prices in Europe, then what? <laughs> like, what's then? Because my thing is like, wait, like if you're an Arsenal fan, you're like, wait a minute, based on how much I'm paying to watch this team, how the hell am I, how the hell are these guys finishing mid table? How the hell are these guys not, for me, Arsenal are not even in the conversation of top four. Like, for me, their aim is top six. So their aim is to try to qualify for the Europa League. That's insane. That is insane that a realistic target for them is sixth. Fourth isn't realistic because the gap between Arsenal and Chelsea, United, City, Liverpool, and so forth is vast. It's gargantuan. And I just think that, you know, it's... But because like, is, have both North London clubs fallen? Arsenal's fall has been f far sharper because remember these are the Invincibles and guys who won the double and so forth. So their fall has been sharp. But what what I will say is this: the North London clubs seem to have now really moved away from that top four position right now. Like before, remember there were days when you know Arsenal top remember, top four was was Wenger's thing and Tottenham fourth, fifth, fourth, fifth, fourth. So they're in out, in out, in out. Um, because what's it called? Because because last season Tottenham were seventh and Arsenal were were eighth, seventh and eighth. You know, um, but it just shows. Which is what I said before: things change. Nothing ever stays the same, and I just think that. The answer to that is money. Not just money, but money to begin with. How you use those funds, who you have in charge. If you don't have the money, you don't properly invest all the money, I don't have the right manager, you're going you're to be screwed. Because the reason why Chelsea, Liverpool, City, United are in that position is because they have the money. They've used the money well, and they have, they've had the right manager. Although United, uh, I'm not too sure how well that is in over there. But for Tottenham and Arsenal, they have the money. They've not invested the money well. And Tottenham did have the right kind of manager. It didn't work out. Mourinho deserved to have a final. For Arsenal, they've actually failed on all those... All those because yeah, Arsenal, Arsenal have the money, not used the money well. And wrong manager. Tottenham have the money. You, they have the freaking money. Use the money well. I don't know. I don't know. That's on and off, on and off. I'm not sure that they have the right manager now. Decent guy, but if if the what they want, if they want a manager to win a trophy, that's the thing. Santo is a decent manager. But what do you want? Do you want to just be decent and cool? Cool. Santo is cool. Do you want to win trophies? Hence why you hired Mourinho. Santos not, no, 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 not the guy. So, so that's what he wants. Because if you're going from Mourinho to, to Santos, which is why Kane was like, wait, what, what's going on here? That means that you're going backwards. Mourinho, whether he failed or succeeded, Mourinho was, I come to win trophies. So it is what it is. But look, man, the Premier League, it's going to be interesting. And it's not going to be a, a four-horse race. So what's... My interest is when we get to December, Gen when we get to January, maybe beginning of February, what's going to be the separation? Do Liverpool and City separate themselves? Do Chelsea and City separate them themselves? Do United come into it? Or because I feel that it's going to be a separation of two guys. Like it's maybe like a three, four, five points differential between the top two in January. 
and maybe six, seven points between third and fourth. What would be crazy, I doubt what would be crazy is if all four guys are within two, three, four points within each other coming into January or something. That would be crazy. Remember to like, subscribe, stay black, one love. Becoming Patreon member. Get access to exclusive videos and also gain access to the podcast of the Saturday and the Sunday Hangouts. Head over to patreon.com forward slash half up to gain all these goodies while also supporting your boy, HH.